Hi, I'm Tim Duker, research agronomist here at the North Central Research Station. Um, and with me today, I'm Dean Boss. I'm with Michigan State University Extension. And we're standing here in some interseeded corn plots. Um, I got to tell you, we really like this type of thing. Um, this is some new innovation, some stuff that uh, Tim had learned about. Tell us what you got here, Tim. So this past winter, I was at a, a meeting and a guy from Iowa had actually presented this story of doing this skip row plots using uh, corn and then followed by soybeans the next year. Uh, it's kind of interesting, we'll get in that in a second. Um, but we have cover crops interseeded in this large area about 60 inches wide that we have the row missing. Um, interseeded in here we have the oats, the tillage radish, and some uh, uh, clover as well. And the purpose of this is to plant uh, our corn like two rows here without any cover crop cover crop in between and next year we come in we plant our two rows of soybeans right here and we would plant a cover crop where the corn is at so it's a biodiverse system um, using multiple crops and helping to build soil in this region in between and it's hopeful that we get uh, some extra sunlight in here and get some extra yield off of the, these rows that got uh, uh, the space in between as well as the diverse um, help that we get to the soil from the cover crops in between as well. This corn was planted on June 18th, um, so it is later than normal, but the cover crops were planted at the same time as well. And you can see going over top of us is the overhead irrigation, so we do have uh, good soil moisture for getting everything established. Tim, tell us about the uh, population. Did you have to cut back on the corn using this method, or what did you do with corn population? We kept the population for the corn the same at 34,000, uh, what I'm planting on the irrigated ground right here. And uh, so, no, we didn't cut back any or, or anything for that. Okay, did you side dress this? How did you, what's the fertility on this? Yeah, so in furrow starter, NP and, uh, P and K, some nitrogen off to the side. And we come back with uh, side dress nitrogen, uh, wide dropped right right along the corn row. So we wasn't putting it in the middles or anything, but right with the corn. Okay. One of the things to really notice here is, you know, you you don't see cover crops that are established this well in a typical uh, interseeded situation, particularly those that are interseeded at say V3 or V5, because the corn has already got such a head start that you get a lot of shading. Even though these are somewhat shade tolerant, you still got to have light uh, for them to grow well. And um, I'm really impressed at the cover crop stand we've got here. We basically have this whole area is, is uh, grown up really well. Um, look at the diversity we're adding to the system. We got radishes in here. Um, we've got uh, oats. Um, just brings a nice diverse mix. The plants are a long ways along at this point in time. Um, we're here at the 1st of August. And um, a lot of times we don't see this type of growth until the corn senesces um, in a typical interseeded system. So um, we're really interested in kind of seeing how this turns out. Um, this uh, has got potential to uh, Im improve our uh, benefits from cover crops um, and work into uh, our corn and soybean system. Anything you want to add at the end there, Tim? <laughs> Just looking forward to, to it as well as what, uh, what kind of benefits we can see to the soil system. So we'll have to get back to you on that. 